Hi, I'm Curious Cass, and this is Curiosity Junkie. Today's guest is a TEDx speaker, writer, and entrepreneur. Please welcome Ed Goyette. Hi, Ed. Welcome to the show. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I always like to let people know how I connected with my guests, and I was watching a lot of your amazing posts in the Mel Robbins page. I mean, a lot of people through Mel Robbins page. She's a wonderful connector. I love that. Absolutely. (laughs) You always have such a positive message. And then as we started connecting, I discovered that you have actually done a TED Talks, which blows me away. I think that's fascinating. I, I love anyone who has a message to share and is brave enough, vulnerable enough to go on a TED Talk and share their story. And yours is a great story. And it, it yeah. is so connected to curiosity. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. All right. I was just like, okay, I've got to have, have you on. So thank you for coming on. And let's talk about, dive in and talk about how you got to the TED Talk. Sure. Uh, the, the, the TED Talk's a really interesting story. And what most people don't know about that is that was actually my first ever public speaking Oh I've done in my life. So it was, I went from, you know, I didn't do the, 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 you know, the, the, what, what do you call it? the, the Toastmasters or anything like that. And I'd done a couple of, you know, company presentations and that type of thing. But my first real, uh, first foray into public speaking was in front of 5,000 people at a sold out. Wow. So, um, it's the, the path to that honestly was, um, through the Mel course that that was uh, power uh, the power of you, mm-hmm. and through that in the spring of 2018, we all did a bunch of really deep dives on ourselves and trying to figure out the roadblocks that we all face in getting to where we want to go. Right. Okay, and the 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 topic of the TED Talk is uh, a program called Yours for the Asking, which we'll get into in a minute, I'm sure, but. It was it was something that I did with my daughter that I feel so strongly about in in putting action behind your kids' dreams. Mm-hmm. And I was on the mail page, and there was a guy from Venezuela, and he held he held up an X, and he said, "I just did a TEDx." And I looked at that, and I thought, "I want to do a TEDx. That'd be really cool." And I went to the the TEDx page, and what a lot of people don't know is that you can apply to do TEDx talks. Oh, wow. So just by happenstance, I saw, and it, it, it varies It varies by region, but ours here up in Portsmouth, they accepted applications. And I happened to go on and there was the application and it was you know four months from whenever we were. And I, I wrote up a bio, I wrote up what, what I wanted to talk about and I sent it in and I was accepted into the audition. So I auditioned with, oh God, maybe 40 other people, uh, probably more than that actually, because I picked, I think, 13 of us. And I went, I did the audition. I went really well. I made it through to the second round. I did really well there. And next thing you know, I was accepted to do the TEDx. Uh (laughs) So it was, it was, I'll, I'll tell you when you're, when you're accepted into doing that, it, it, a whole host of things happen because now you have a coach and you have, you have to write it and it has to be within an 18 minute um, window. And I, it was much different than I ever thought it would be to tell you the truth. Right. So it, you could ask my wife, she was a little bit tired <laughs> of the TED talk by the time. <laughs> by the time it actually rolled around, she's like, honey. I, I must have said that thing. If I said it once, I said it a hundred times, the, the 12 minute talk. Um, it was super it, smooth. Like it was fantastic. You. you did amazing. I, I was like, wow. You, anybody out there who's watching this, if you, if, if you have it in your mind, and, I, and I've said this to so many people who have, gone through the process of doing the audition and some of them, you know, some of them have made it and some of them haven't. Um, But even the ones who have, who haven't, it's such a great process to go through. Um, And even if you never audition, okay. I ask people, what's your Ted talk? And, and that reframes your mind a little bit to say like, what in my past would I stand on stage in front of 5,000 people and try to share? 
Wow. And that is a really great, I find it to be a really great question to ask people, like, what's your TED Talk? Mm-hmm. And you, it's really interesting to see the responses because people actually stop and go, hold on, what is my TED Talk? And a lot of passion is, you know, and, and a lot of purpose is, is uncovered in that question. Yeah, that's a great one. I love it. I had no idea that you could fill out an application and that there yep. was an actual audition process. Some of them are like that. Some of them are through a nomination process. Um, I have another one that I want to do in the future um, and, and on action. That's what we're talking about today. But it's, it, yeah. there's, a, there's a couple of other ones that I have in my mind that I want to apply for down in Boston and down in other places. So Right. Now, I, I think it's fantastic. So let's talk a little bit about the, the talk. Sure. That- I, I love what you did for your daughter. And actually it stems from a lesson your father taught you. Right. Yeah. Right. I think it's, and it, it, the interesting thing about that is my dad, he worked for Raytheon for 40 years. Mm-hmm. You know, he wasn't an entrepreneur. He wasn't a guy that, that was like the outside of the box, just doing the crazy stuff all the time. Yeah. And this is, this is one of the things that, that I really try to, to hammer home to people is when it comes to your kids, even that one moment, even that one moment can change their lives. So in that one moment, you know, my dad was um, the coach of my little league team and we had changed uniforms and we didn't have to the, the replica um, major league uniforms. We didn't, the league didn't have the money to buy the hats, the matching hats. So he wrote a letter to Joe Torre, the manager of the, of the New York Mets at the time, and next thing you know, 30 hats show up from the spring training ha- camp. How and, fantastic is that? Like, and you know, we went on to win. We went on to win. We went undefeated that year. We went on to the, win the championship. It's a movie. It's it's crazy. It's a movie. Right. It is kind of. It's fantastic. It's, like, it's the movie. It's the movie you wouldn't believe. You're like, oh come on, seriously, they went undefeated because of the hats. <laughs> but um, but the the thing that when it's interesting how lessons come along, how how they come around in their time. And that thing laid that lesson. I thought it was very cool. And I, I hadn't thought about that in years. And the funny thing is, is I really only started connecting the dots when the Ted talk came out. Mm. So as I was writing the talk, I was like, Oh my God, my dad wrote a letter to the New York Mets back in 1979. And there's the impact. Right. I just got goosebumps. Like, yeah, it was, it, it, it's, it's really a, such a cool thing that, that now, you know, you see, you see generation things that get passed from generation to generation, some of them positive, some of them negative. And this one gave me that, that modeled that action that when you come up against something that's important, that when, when you can affect your child in a deep way, Mm. Okay, then drop drop your comfort level. Your comfort level doesn't matter in this equation. Mm-hmm. It really doesn't, because they they're in that age where they're like all like life is limitless, right? right. Like for a seven or eight year old, what are they worried about? Yeah, <laughs> they, they'll ask anybody for anything at any time. Absolutely, so mimic that behavior and put your adult your adult power behind that, that's where the magic is. Right. That's where the magic is. So when, when I had that opportunity, my daughter was seven. She, she was supposed to be asleep hours before and she came running downstairs and said she wanted to be a cartoonist. And I, I was just like, it, and like I say in the talk in that moment, I could have just said, that's great. Go back to bed. And that's what normally we would do. Yes. Right? Absolutely. Because we are in ourselves going, Oh my God, my kid just came downstairs again and I just want 10 minutes for myself. Yes. But if you appreciate the passion in a, in a moment like that, now a lot of times it's like, can I have another snack? Can I have another water? Can I? And you're like, Oh, please. Like we need to stop this now. Yeah. Right. right. But when a kid comes down with, Hey, this is what I want to do with my life. Yeah those are the moments that you pay attention to. And honestly, you said like the thing that I did for my daughter and that's completely the opposite. It's the thing she did for me. Right. There's the message. It really really is because, and in looking back, she has turned 
um, that moment turned my life into a, something completely different. It sent me on adventures to New York and and Florida and Pennsylvania and all over the country. It put me in into contact with people who I had looked at from afar going, how do you do what you do? Right. And then I get to see my seven and eight-year-old daughter ask them, how do you do that? That's just because I paid attention for a second and just because she got excited one night. Right. You know, so it's, that's, that's the, that's kind of the underlying thing of that is, you know, she wanted to be the cartoonist. And in that moment, I thought we need to find a cartoonist for you to talk to. And we, the next morning I had found one. I shared that with her. She wrote this woman, a letter, this woman, Hillary Price, who's an amazing cartoonist and an amazing person. She wrote her a letter, and next thing you know, we're in Hillary Price's studio getting a, a lesson in cartooning. Right. And That's wonderful. Yeah, to see that, to see that unfold. And I'm I'm very thankful that I had the the wide angle lens on that day to say we should do more of this. And that turned into an actual career path for, for her, not in cartooning, but in fashion design, which she's pursuing now. Is she pursuing that? I wondered if she is, she's uh, she's, she got accepted to um, uh, an art call uh, mass art and she's taken a gap year given everything what we're going through right now, but she's <laughs> taken a gap year, but she is uh, writing a business plan to launch her own sustainable fashion brand. I love that. I love yeah. the pictures you shared of her in your TED talk and how, you know, your curtains, everything in your house suddenly oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some sort of clothing piece. Yes. I, I all that for a very long time. And she's, you know, she's a very unique girl that in that she had, she's always had the talent for art and, and drawing and perspective. And she, really pounds on her craft. I mean, that she is very, very dedicated to being the best artist that she can, mm -hmm. uh, can be. And she trans, she translates that in so many different ways. And when she, when she gets on the fashion bench, she's coming up with very, uh, really interesting designs that are a combination of like 1940s class with modern day kind of aesthetic to it. So it's, yes. it's, I'm, I'm really excited to see where she goes with it. Right. Right. Yes. Well, um, let's talk a little bit about what you're, what you're working on now mm -hmm. and how people can connect with you. So let's take just a second and talk about different ways people can connect with you and then we'll kind of branch into sure. what, what you're sure. working on. So, so I started a new company called uh, The Thought Center, thethoughtcenter.com. And The Thought Center is a values-based production company in which we're taking um, kind of a life path of uh, action-based, uh, action, the action mindset, okay? So we're taking the action mindset and we're kind of translating it into um, action-based families. So how do you, how do you manage a family that, that, is, that is always taking action and putting action behind their dreams and their goals. Ah, yes. Right. right. And um, we have a we have a website they're going to be launching called educationthroughaction.com yeah. and it's it's all about that like it's experiential learning mm -hmm. and it's and it's reaching out to people who can give you the the advice that you need that's going to propel you beyond what you normally would if you just opened a book. Absolutely. I love that word experiential and learning. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a total hands-on mm -hmm. learner. I can pick up a book and read it all day long and it, it, it doesn't absorb the way experiencing something and actually doing it will, will help you really understand a process or the way something works. So I love that you're doing work with that. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yes. Yeah. That, that's the thought center. So we're, we're doing uh, several products. Uh, within that, so online courses, books, and just different programs to bring people beyond their fears, beyond their comfort levels, um, into into a life that, and, and we don't want to say like the life of your dreams. Or like I think that's kind of over overused, right? Because we don't really know what our dreams are when we get there. You know, it's it's kind of like they change all the time. What we are into is 
is taking the next step. Mm -hmm. So what's your next step and how do you get there? Okay. And it's always through action. Right. Always, always, always through action. And, and that's going to be, um, well, that is the thing that I'm working very hard on right now is to bring these products um, into life that will help parents connect more deeply with their kids, have kids realize, and this is, this is such an important thing, is have kids realize how much they matter mm. and, and how relevant they are in the world at the earliest age we can. And the one thing that my partner and I were talking about is, is remember when you were a little kid, and I don't know if this is the same for you, but it was totally the thing, the thing for me, is that we, when you used to get like a, a thing, uh, a, a, like a toy that, you know, maybe it was a, a construction set and the things were already screwed in like halfway and, and you could just pretend to bang on them. But you really wanted to bang that nail through the thing, you know? Right. You yes. really wanted the machine to work. You didn't want the picture of the computer. You wanted the computer. Yes. And that's the thing that we're, that we're doing right now is making sure that kids can bang that nail and, and type on that computer and experience, hey, you put something into the world, people are going to respond to that and show you how important you are. Yes, absolutely. That, that's, that's, the, that's the overall base of the Thought Center right now. Right. No, I, I think it's great. And the other piece of that is kind of like what you said, the, the message that came out of that experience with your daughter was kind of coming back to your curiosity oh, yeah. to help her grow in, in a way. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's probably the one thing as adults, we forget that inner child and that curiosity piece and just the wonder of everything and exploring it and investigating it. I just, that's what I'm all about right now is how do you turn that on in adults? <laughs> yeah. It, it, I call it the kid mind. So we all have the kid, our kid minds never go away, yeah. but we've at some point during your life, you were told to stop mm -hmm. dreaming. Yes. You were told it wasn't reasonable. You were told that reality didn't work that way. And it could have been by, by a kid on the playground. It could have been by a teacher. It could have been told by right. a parent. Now, the, the one thing that, that I say this so much, and I, and I think it's, it's, it's sobering, okay, is that if you tell a four-year-old that Santa Claus exists and he comes down your chimney and gives you presents, they'll believe you, okay? If you tell them they're not worthy, mm -hmm. they can't do anything, or they're less than, they'll believe you too. Absolutely. Now they will eventually outgrow Santa Claus, but they'll never outgrow those other messages. Right. Uh, until they maybe down luck. If they're lucky down the road, they'll realize what happened and try to reclaim that. Right. And usually so it's much later in life and after oh, you've yeah. impacted another group of human beings. And <laughs> after a lot of pain and a lot of agony and a lot of loss, and a lot of missed opportunity, maybe if we're lucky, we'll realize that down the road. Right. So what I'm here to do is to, is to prevent that from happening mm -hmm. and create a new generation of, of kids and parents and families mm -hmm. that realize this, honor that, and tell kids, you know, hey, we're going to make sure that if you're really passionate about something, we're going to help you pursue that. Right. You know, we're going to help you move you in that direction. And nine times out of 10, that's not the direction they end up going in. Right. You know, I can tell you what my, with my kids, they've changed directions a million different times. Absolutely. And, and that's one thing that I prepare people for. You know, my son was a world-class golfer when he was seven years old wow. and we lived on golf courses and now he barely golfs yeah. and he does music. And now we go to, well, we used to go to concerts, but, but now it's all about, but now it's all about music production. Mm -hmm. But the lessons that we learned on the golf course are irreplaceable and invaluable because we can't, like, that was a whole thing that all feeds into one thing after another. Absolutely. You know? It's just that continued encouragement for creativity and learning 
mm-hmm. that I think is is the key for children and and the hands on. That's why Montessori's do so well and are so impactful because it's that experiential learning. They get to do it and touch it and yes. So what about a message for dads? Because a lot of moms are a big part of, we tend to be the nurturers in the family. We tend to be the ones that, that bring the kids up through. And traditionally the dad is the support unit, but not the one that is encouraging the, the nurturing and the creativity and the educational experience. What, what's a great message for dads? Well, that, that, that's actually a, an opportunity that a lot of dads don't realize because it, in a lot of relationships, the woman will take over, like you said, the mom will take over all of that stuff and it kind of leaves the dad in that, uh, in the worst case, the authoritarian, you know, don't let your dad hear this. <laughs> Wait till your dad gets that's home. How it was. That's how I grew up. You know, it's like, you know, it's just, oh no, you know, yeah. um, and it, it kind of leaves, and, and if you look at, if you look at how dads are per- portrayed in the media mm-hmm. and on TV shows, they're these bumbling morons that just kind of like can't put two, you know, two things together and yeah. make things happen. Okay. But that's actually an opportunity to be the kid. Okay. But if you do it, but you have to do it in the right way. Mm-hmm. All right. It's deep listening. And always be the hero in waiting. Okay. So in that moment with my daughter back in 2010, I was the hero in waiting. I didn't even know it. Okay. I was just open enough to really see an authentic want and need and desire in my daughter at that moment. Yeah. You know, and when you're, when you have an ear out for it, now there are two things that kid, all kids say that I always say, like, keep your ear out for it. When you hear, I hope and I wish, Okay, I hope or I wish. Those are like, bam, go for that. Listen really carefully to what comes after, what comes next. Because a lot of times you can put action behind that right away and teach them a very valuable lesson and go on an adventure out of nowhere. Yeah. You know, and it's, and so for dads, that's the, that would be the biggest thing that I would say is, is just listen to your kids and really understand where they're coming from, what's important about them. Now we, and I fall into this too. Sometimes kids will talk about things that are seemingly just irrelevant to us forever, you know, and they'll tell you everything, nothing you want to know about Pokemon or Dungeons and Dragons. And they go on and on and on and on. And you might be thinking, I've got a lot of work to do or my God, I'm tired. Or like, I don't even understand this. I would, I would very much recommend that in that moment, under, ask yourself why you don't want to hear this. Okay, ask yourself why. Why don't I want to? Why don't I want to? Like listen to what my kid's passionate about right now. Yeah. And there's a lot of really interesting things that will pop up. And then I would recommend that you take a breath and start stop the flow of the information coming in but ask them why they're so interested in that. Mm, that's okay. a great question. So what, you know, what, what about this? Like really, really like, what do you dig about this? Like, okay, forget about all the technical stuff. Like you just gave me a ton of information, but what's fun about this? What's really fun about this? Yeah. And when you, you can save yourself a lot of time too. <laughs> a lot of like listening to, you know, every power of every character and every scene of every movie <laughs> Right. Cause we've all endured that. <laughs> Absolutely. But you can say like, well, what, what about this genre is great. Yeah. And you will be surprised at how high level you can get with your kids and they will meet you halfway. I guarantee it. They will meet you halfway because if you give them the opportunity and say, Hey, like I'm acknowledging your passion for this. Okay. But, but bring it up a level. Like what's really cool about this genre or what's really cool about the storyline. And once you start, once you start hearing that you're going to connect a lot of dots in your head and you're going to see some different pathways to take them down that you're going to dig as well. Yes. 
you know, and I've done that. I've done that with so much Minecraft and like all the, all the stuff that you just sit there and you're like, how do you know this much about this thing? Right. And obviously it's really important to them in a moment because they know so much about it. So mm-hmm. they've taken the time to learn about it. So yes, we should be paying attention and having conversations and digging in and finding out more yeah. because they're super passionate about that. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I love it. What else are you um, working on these days? Anything? I know you're, you're on Facebook. You have a yep. Facebook group. Yep. Yeah. I do. Um, I do a lot of writing. Mm-hmm. So I have a page called thought you Worry. And again, that was when I went down the path of being an author. So I have a book that I'm, I'm writing called The Lightning Years, basically the parenting through ages 7 to 12, mm-hmm. uh, maybe 7 to 10, we're not sure, uh, but it's going to highlight the opportunity that exists in that, in that small time period when you're still the hero in the world, but there's at the same time opening up and realize that, oh, people actually do things for money and a career and there you, you you can take um, advantage of that very small window where you're not changing diapers, you're not chasing them around, you're not as concerned for their safety, but you're still the center of the universe. You right. Know? The lightning years is is um, going to detail that and give and give a lot of insight into that world. Um, when I started going down that path. I realized, and this is this is just kind of an exercise in vulnerability, vulnerability that turned into something different. Is I realized that I was very nervous to put my writing out there. Mm. Very, very nervous to put my writing out there, yeah. and I suffered the same thing that most writers do, in which you you sit there and say, "Okay, I think it's pretty cool, but I would never dare show it to anybody else." <laughs> right. You know? And I and one day it was it was. Um, have you ever heard of Inktober? Inktober, no. Inktober is so cool. So Inktober is um, a challenge every year in October that artists um, will will do, and you post an original work every day for thirty days. Oh my gosh! And it could be flowers, or it could be, and they do a theme. So if you next when, this coming October, look up Inktober. Actually, look up Inktober, and you'll see the most amazing art. So I was. Yeah, I, I knew a friend who was doing Tober and I thought, okay, well, maybe this is an opportunity that I can turn it into my own thing. So I, I called it Thought Tober. I'm like, I'm going to put an original thought out every day on Facebook on my personal page. And what I would do is I'd wake up and I'd say, how am I feeling today? What bothers me? What's the opportunity? What's whatever? And before I even get out of bed, I would grab my phone and I would write something in 15 minutes. Wow. And whatever I did, I, that was my thought tober for the day. That was my thought for the day. And I talked myself into it and I did 31 straight days. And what I found was initially people didn't know what the hell was going on with me. They were like, okay, I didn't <laughs> it. like Ed's talking about vulnerability and, and, and deep thought. And like, I, he just turned into yeah. Steve on us. Like what just happened to, to Ed? He's being very strange right now. Like, and I actually lost people off my Facebook page. Oh, wow. I followers. I didn't have a lot of followers to begin with, but I lost followers. I lost a couple of friends. It was, I'm like, oh my God, what have I done? Like, I just turned into this weird dude that is putting deep thoughts onto Facebook. Yeah. But then something, after a couple of weeks, something really interesting started happening. It's the engagement I got and the messages I started getting from all over the world started coming in. And people were saying, I'm thinking exactly that or you just read my mind or thank you for that. I needed that. Yes. And what occurred to me is that you, me and everybody listening to this, if you're listening to this right now, we are more similar than you would ever imagine. So if you are feeling something odds are, and I can guarantee actually that there are a lot of people feeling the exact same thing that you're feeling. Mm-hmm. And when you articulate that, it really resonates. Yeah. So at the end of Thoughttober, I thought, huh, this was kind of fun. I'll do Thoughtvember. So I did Thoughtvember. And then at the end of Thoughtvember, I was about to stop 
and I got a message for some, from somebody overseas and they said that they were going through a rough time. And the first thing they did every day was look for what I had written. Oh, wow. And I'm like, here comes flop summer. <laughs> like, yeah, like, <laughs> it's up. So I, I brought it all the way through the end of February or uh, mid February. And th- so I'm coming up with a book called thought you Yes. And thought you is going to be a 300. I, I did 180 days in a row. Yeah. Our original writing. And now the stuff that you, the stuff that connected us, so that you see on Facebook is I do it more sporadically, maybe three times a week, maybe four times a week, whatever, whenever kind of things come to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I write every day, but I try to put something out, you know, at least three times a week. And when I get up to 365 ones that I like, yeah. I'm going to combine it with a bunch of sunrise pictures that I take when I kayak. Uh, we have a lake. Here. I love that view, by the way, the kayak. It's the same spot every day. It's five minutes from my house. Ah, oh, my gosh. Amazing. So it, it's, it's getting up at four in the morning, though, so <laughs> I work for it. Yeah. But I'm, I'm going to combine the pictures and the words and come out with something that you can flip through and, and go to on a specific day and see what that message is. And hopefully it resonates. Hopefully it kind of moves people. But mm-hmm. honestly, if if I produce it and it doesn't sell anything and it just kind of sits there, it's a passion project. Absolutely. I just want to do, so. Yes. And I think that's, that's the thing that I think is so important for people to hear is that it's okay if you put something out there and it doesn't get picked up and there's mm-hmm. no major interest in it. If you were passionate about it, you needed to share that message. Oh yeah. Who knows what will happen down the road? Even if one person picks it up and it does something for them, it's impacted one person. That's why I go, don't let fear keep you from taking action. Just do that thing you want to do because you don't know where it's going to lead you. You have just have no idea. Like, go for it. I, I've, I did just because I, just because I wanted to. I started coaching people one day. And I, I woke up on a Tuesday and I said, you know what? I have some stuff to share. I think I could impact some people in a positive way. I don't really care what I charge because I just want to see if I can do it. Yeah. And I put a thing out on Facebook and I said, hey, I'm looking for five people, 30 days. Let's see if we can get a project launch for you. Right? I don't even remember what I charged them because it was not much. Right. Okay. With On Friday, I had five clients. And then for the next 30 days, we launched five projects over once a week. And it was, am I a certified coach? No, absolutely not. Did I go through $10,000, $20,000 worth of training? Absolutely not. Could they do it better? Most likely. Yeah. Okay. But at that point I was confident in the things that I knew Mm -hmm. and I wanted to share them. Yes. And my audience showed up. Yeah. So on that, so the, the key here is you go from thought to plan and plan to action without letting fear come in right? because there's a thousand ways you can talk yourself out of doing something. There's one way to take, to, to get it done. And that's through taking the first step. Right. And, and that's, that's really the key. And it comes from deep confidence. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's, and that's a scary word. It is because they, most of us go through life, looking at other people and, and going, Oh my God, I, I could never do that. Like, look at how great they are. The reality is, is their life is just as much of a mess as yours is. Absolutely. It really is. It really we're all, is. It, we're all dealing with crap. Like it's, yeah, I can tell it like the, the, the thing I can share is through action. I've, I've been a coach. I've spoken at the LA Coliseum I've, I've done like a bunch of stuff. Like I've done a Ted talk. There's a bunch of stuff that, that just a normal guy from New Hampshire in his fifties starting in his fifties shouldn't really have been able to do so far. Right. Okay. And just by showing up and saying, Hey, I'm interested. And I'm kind of like, uh, I'm going to say a couple of smart things and see if you see if it resonates. Yeah. Right by just showing up in the room and saying, this is, this is what I'm here to do. And this is what I, you know, this, this is my content. What do you think? And, and asking for advice and, and, and putting action behind that. 
I've been amazed at how things have unfolded since I've put serious action behind my thoughts. And I, and I think if, if somebody doesn't get anything else from other, other than this, from the time that we're spending here, right. It's literally just do the first thing. It could be sending an email. Okay. It could be identifying, um, you know, someone who might be able to help you. It could be looking up a national organization of whatever you're interested in. Cause I guarantee there's a national organization of whatever you're interested in. <laughs> right. right. Absolutely. Yes. And, and what happens in you when you do that is it suddenly becomes real. Mm-hmm. It suddenly doesn't become a dream. You suddenly see other people who have actually done something in that and you look for the different levels, you'll see all the different levels that people have achieved. Like, oh, okay, that person's like one step beyond me. Oh my God, talk to that person. Yes. They'll yeah, be psyched that you reached out. Yeah, don't see it as competition. No. See it as an opportunity to learn how they took the steps or what steps they took. And like you said earlier when we were talking, people are more than willing to share how they got to where they got or the processes or the things that you may not know Mm -hmm. willing to share that. Like if somebody talked to me about starting a podcast, I'd be like, Oh, let me tell you what you need to know. (laughs) Well, I'll I'll expand on that. I'm so glad that you said that. I'll expand on that. Okay. And this is, this is the thing that this is the thing I've experienced dozens of times. Okay. So this isn't just like a one-off that I'm like, okay, whatever. All right. It all comes down to this. I want you, I want you wherever you are. Okay. I want you to think about what you do or what you know about. Okay. And then I want you to imagine that one day out of nowhere, you get an email or you get a letter in the mail and it says, hello, I have, I came across you on whatever platform and I am so impressed with what you've accomplished and you've really inspired me to follow my dream of doing whatever that is. And I'm wondering if you'd be kind enough to, to get on the phone or exchange an email to answer a couple questions I have about how you got to where you are. And I want you to vision that, like put that in your head and tell me how you feel. That's great. You feel really great. Don't you? Yeah. Okay. Now, and especially if it's an eight year old, Okay, that's an eight-year-old. That's like, oh my God. That's like, now what kind of person would say like, oh, geez, this is stupid. Yeah. This person wants to follow my same career path. Like, yeah. Okay, we don't want to talk to them anyway. Right, right. If somebody rejects it. Person, it find a different one. Yeah. But I can, I, can, I can tell you that people at the very highest level, the peak of their career, okay, like Michelle Smith in, in New York, fashion designer in New York, Keith Lockhart, the the conductor of the Boston Symphony, Bobby McFerrin, 10 time Grammy award winner. All of these people saw value in that and not only reached back, but invited us into their world to meet them and share what they knew. Right. And did it at a level that just blew me away every time. Right. And it, it simply just came down to what, no matter who you are and how much you've achieved, mm-hmm. We all seek validation. Oh, absolutely. Okay. A lot of us get tone deaf and uncomfortable with accolades mm-hmm. and compliments because most of them are empty and there's an ulterior motive around underneath a lot of them. Right. Okay. But validation is one of the most powerful things you can give to somebody uh, of all time. Right. Right. So when you're validating somebody in the right way, authentically, and saying, wow, I am just, I, what's your process? Please tell me about your process because I am blown away. You have inspired me. And that is such a powerful word. Mm-hmm. You inspired me to take action. Oh, my God. Right? Like, if somebody said to me, like, Ed, you inspired me to take action and go – my day, like I'll go to bed. Day made. I'm done. Like there it is. Absolutely. Right? Yes. And how can I help you? Like, yeah. Yeah. please, yeah. let's talk because mm-hmm. that's going to be the most fun conversation I'll have that day. Right. Yeah. No, that's fantastic. 
Awesome. So that's what I've been living since since 2010. And it's worked both um, for me as an adult. It's changed my life in, in so many different ways and so many positive ways. And has brought me all over the country. And I was actually supposed to be speaking in Brazil oh. um, in October. That's not going to happen. That got, that got changed. But right. um, yeah, I was supposed to be one of the keynote speakers for um, the Parenting 2.0 talks down in Sao Paulo. But um, again, it was just action, reaching out to the right people, yeah. telling them you're passionate about the same thing that they are and connecting around, uh, around those thoughts and ideas that, that move you. Right. And move them. Yeah. Well, Ed Goyette, you are an inspiration for all those who are considering taking action. Just do it. Take mm-hmm. the action. Take that first step. Just yeah, like you got it right. <laughs> make it happen right yes yes that, that's the thing it's like just do something yes you know don't don't sit today and let another day go by right Take one little step and that's all it takes yeah i found too that when i spoke it out loud it it kind of became like it was going to hold me more accountable because i just said it out loud even if i just said it out loud to myself in the beginning that i was going to do this it was spoken which made me go, okay, so today I have to take some action because I'm doing this. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and to expand on that, okay, if, if another day goes by and I see a lot of people falling into this trap, okay, if another day goes by and you don't take action because of something, don't you dare beat yourself up. Right. Okay, because now you're going back three steps when you went one forward. Yes. Two different things. There's a growth mindset where, where it says not yet. I'm getting there, which is super powerful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Action mindset is exponentially more powerful than that. Yes. Because you've actually taken that first step. Okay. So try to take that first step. Say you're going to do it. If something gets in your way, you're going to do it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And if that's it, take it tomorrow. But never, never fall into that trap where you're going, oh, look at me. I'm such a loser because I didn't even do the thing I said I was going to do today. Right. I give up. (laughs) I give up. Don't. Right. So if I can help anybody, please reach out to me on Facebook. There's, you know, that's the easiest way to connect with me. Thought you were uh, the, the thought center.com, uh, the contact page, send me an email through there. Um, check out thought you are. And yeah, if I, I'm, I am literally here to help people. So if, if anybody needs anything or feels like I could help them in any way, please reach out. I'd love to. Okay. Awesome. I love that. And just for all of you out there, I will put links to all of those connections for Ed in the description of the podcast and also in the description of the YouTube video. So they will be there. They will also go on the website, curiosityjunkie.com. Ed Goyette, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your wisdom on taking action and exploring Experiential learning. That's hard to say. It is hard to say, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> I love it. Great. I've, I've had a great time. This is you're doing such a great job with this podcast. I really, Thanks. I've been so impressed with with listening to the other ones you've done, and and oh. kudos to you for for everything you're doing here. It's just a wonderful thing. Thank you. I'm having a ton of fun with it. I'm I'm really just enjoying learning from so many people. And that's been the best, the best piece of it for me. Just it's fun meeting awesome people. So thank you. And to all of you, thank you for tuning in and listening and watching and stay safe and stay curious. Have a great day. <laughs> <laughs>